Namaste to all. I've explained the concepts of idol worship in my channel so many times that idol worship is against Vedas, and Almighty God severely punishes if we do idol worship. I was reading through the Light of Truth, eleventh chapter. A beautiful question and a very very intelligent answer by Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati. The questioner is asking, God is formless. In in fact, this question is there in many of our minds. The questioner is asking, God is formless. so it is impossible to have his conception in our minds therefore some image is essential if nothing else is done it is something to go before the idol pay homage to it with folded hands think of that almighty god and recite his name what is the harm in this marishi answers when god is formless and all pervasive it is impossible to make an idol of him first of all If the mere sight of an idol is a reminder of Almighty God to you, is it not possible to think of God by seeing the God-made objects such as earth, water, fire, air, vegetables, and various other things, which exhibits the wonderful creativeness of that Almighty? Are not these huge idols such as the earth and the mountains, out of which men make their small idols, sufficient to remind you of the existence of that greatest artist, Almighty God? It is quite wrong on your part to say that you remember God by seeing the idols. When the idol is not before you, it is very likely that in private you forget that God and engage yourself in theft, in adultery and in other evil pursuits. The idolater think here there is no one to see me and he falls victim to temptations. These are all the disadvantages of idol worship. If a man really does not rely upon the idolatry and feels that the Almighty God is within all, he pervades through everything and being all knowing sees everything that is being done or thought by anybody does not even think of doing a evil action. What to say about doing it? That means a person who worships Almighty God who is all pervasive, he will know that whatever he thinks is known to god so he will not even think anything badly so he will not commit a crime this is what marishi is trying to say and further marishi says he is sure that whatever evil action he would do by thought by word or by deed will not go unpunished by that all knowing just almighty god just means justice provider mere remembrance of that name is of no use as the word sugar does not taste sweet nor the word neem tastes bitter unless you actually taste it in your mouth so the now questioner is asking is the repetition of the name altogether useless marshi answers your method of repeating the names is not right this is puranic style like you know rama rama krishna krishna shiva shiva hare hare etc the way in which you recite the names are useless and are against the vedas so here i would like to quote marishi has not written it but i would like to quote here from the vedas point of view we must take the name of that almighty god which is given by almighty god in the vedas for example god says my name is om if we call om for sure god listens to us god sees our prayers but if we call instead of om we call him john we call him some other name will god listen to us or we call him ram we call him krishna these are not the names of almighty god in the vedas so if god says you must chant om we must chant om why should we argue on that point we cannot take any name and say that no no this is god has to listen to this name this is not acceptable by almighty god so this is very important and further maharishi has written a beautiful point see almighty god is justice provider he is ever impartial he never commits any sins So similarly when you take the name of almighty god from the vedas you must also be impartial you must do fair trade when you do business or when you do any work you must do it with honesty you must not cheat others and you must not be partial so if you follow these qualities of almighty god then god is pleased upon you otherwise he will punish you a vedic follower will get highest punishment if he is going against vedas this we must always understand my acharya always says if you follow vedas then but still you do commit mistakes god will punish you severely because god says that you have studied vedas why are you doing mistakes so this is this is very very important for all of us to understand the question is further asking we know that almighty god is formless 
but he assumes the body of shiva vishnu ganesha surya devi rama krishna etc etc therefore we make the idols of their avatars why it is wrong then marishi answers wrong wrong and wrong the vedas mention that almighty god as unborn ajayek paata says the rigveda and bodiless akayam says ajurveda and he cannot come within the limitations of birth and death reasoning too is against the incarnation of almighty god for he who is all pervading infinite and free from pain pleasure visibility etc cannot put himself in a very tri- tiny drop of semen or womb or the human body going and coming is possible in case of a localized object only god is motionless god is invisible and there is not even a small particle in this universe where he is not therefore to conceive him as a incarnating is absurd as it is to get the son of a sterile woman married and then to see her grandson what a beautiful answer and further the uh, question is asking this is a very common question in our minds when god is all pervading which you also agree that means he is inside the idol also then why not i worship the idols the questioner is saying god is neither in the wood nor in the stone nor in any earthen article he is a thing of conception so he is realizable wherever you conceive him if you conceive him in the idol he is there in the idol this is what he is saying marishi answers when god is all pervading then to conceive him in one article in exclusion with others is just like depriving the world emperor of his vast empire and confining him to the ownership of a small cottage what a great disrespect are you not similarly dishonoring that almighty god by your idol worship when you hold him all pervading why do you pluck the flowers and leaves from the trees and offer him to the idol why do you apply sandal paste why do you offer incense sticks why do you ring the bells or play the cymbals and other musical instruments he is in your hands why do you then fold hands before him he is in your head why do you bow your head before him he is in the food and in the water why do you offer these things to him he is in water why do you give him bath we admit that he exists in all the objects but the question is do you worship that which pervades or that which is pervaded if you worship the pervader then it is meaningless to offer sandal flowers water etc to a block of wood or stone and if you worship the pervaded then why do you speak the falsehood that you are worshiping almighty god why do you not dare to tell the truth that you are worshiping the stones what a beautiful answer by marishi i think this is completely covering all the aspects of idol worship we must understand that we cannot go against the vedas which is emanating from almighty god we must always abide by vedic rules why we should create a idol worship which is not existing in the vedas and go against the almighty god and get our punishments why not we simply follow the vedic way of worship the simplest way of worship in vedas is name jap every day name jap of om every day agni hotra every day ashtanga yoga abhyas and every day adopting and controlling our senses and perception and serving the acharya whenever possible we have to go to acharya and serve him listen vedas from him this is worship of almighty god serving our parents serving our elders giving you know peace of mind in our family to everybody make them happy is also worship of almighty god F- following the commandments of vedas is worship of almighty god worship means to obey his rules so we can simply obey the vedic rules and worship him instead of idol worship idol worship is totally against vedas but please understand if you are a muslim brother who are listening to this video do not say that yeah yeah quran also says the same no quran says maybe idol worship is wrong but quran speaks about some other Al- almighty god which is not the god who creates this universe and gives the knowledge of the vedas so this concept of idol worship what i'm explaining is not for supporting quran or bible or any other book this is fully supporting only the vedic sanatan dharma and all the human beings you are a muslim or a christian or a buddhism or a jain or a hindu all human be- beings must adopt vedas in the life because vedas emanate from almighty god we are adopting we are following we are using all the articles created by god we are using air water earth atmosphere everything 
irrespective of our religion similarly we must adopt vedas irrespective of our religions or caste thank you so much namaste om